Hello and welcome to the third Functional Fighter podcast. Uh, myself, Stephen, um, and Amanda here. Hello. So, um, this is the third one we've done. We've got a little bit of feedback from the other two, and uh, we put our uh, put some questions out on the Facebook link, asking if we have any questions for us on Functional Fighter. And we had a few uh, few coming back to us, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we've got, got uh, four or five, I think. Yeah. That we're going to cover yeah. in, in this time frame. So we're going to go through a few questions, and we just want to get this lad last podcast out before I fly out, flying out for the UK on Monday. Um, going to be a bit weird, do a bit of training in 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 London and over in Holland as well, and going to see family. So I'll be away for a few weeks. So we thought we'll get one more in, mm. and then we might have a few uh, a few coaches on the next one. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Mm, yeah. yeah. So we've got a few things. In the works, so the next one should be should be fun as well. And yeah, having some like a guest speaker. Yeah, that would be cool. I yeah, reckon. some other voice other than yours and mine. That's so right. It's going to be bonus. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we're going to cover some questions today. I'd say it's all in relation to what our background is, because if you haven't been listening before, um, my background's in martial arts. Um, been coaching for a number of years and done some work um coaching different organizations and got a massive interest in the psychology of fighting as well as obviously coaching fighters um amanda's background is in uh, neurology and uh, neuroscience neuroscience yeah. sorry see i'm not, yes. that, I'm not that bright <laughs> um, no i'm a lecturer at uh university so i teach neuroscience and and i also teach anatomy of all the systems in the body but really specialize in musculoskeletal so uh, that's sort of where Steve and I connected because you know obviously he's as a um, as a martial artist and as a coach. He's and you train at the gym as well. Yeah, <laughs> obviously training yeah. at the gym, but yeah. you know you're right into movement of the body and yeah. and um, and all of the components of that. And I'm of course interested in the science of it. So yeah, I love um, I love the breakdown and the, yeah. the teaching of how to break a movement down and. Yeah. To generate speed, power, improve reactions, anything to get improvements, and then obviously with your with your background, and we we started chatting a while ago. You started bringing in different aspects that I didn't even know about, you mm. know, and be able to break things down a little bit more scientifically than the way yeah. I just do it from just experience. You yeah, know? well, it's a uh, it's a give and take relationship because you teach me heaps of stuff, and uh, I teach you stuff. Yep. So exactly. So I just thought I'd give us a bit so, of background. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you haven't if you haven't ever listened to before, obviously we've only done two before, but mm. that's a little bit of background of where, where we've come from. And um over the podcast I'm sure we'll add little stories in of what we've done before and things and you get to know us a little bit better. Mm. But today I think we're gonna cover we're gonna try and cover five questions, but we don't wanna we don't wanna cover we don't wanna go too long on the yeah, podcast. So it depends on so. how long we waffle on for so yeah. if, it, if we if it end up ends up going uh too long then we can always tackle yeah. some of the latter questions in another podcast because they all relate to to fitness really and stuff that we we are generally talking about so yeah so the, the five questions that were we've been asked uh again through our facebook page uh were the following ones the first one was do women need to train different within a month uh, based on their hormone changes, which is um, something I've done a little bit before. I went to a course about how, obviously, um, we can train women differently at uh, different parts of the month, and I'm going to leave that one mostly to Amanda to go through because she can break things down properly. Um, another question we were asked was, should running be a part of a fighter's training program? And I know this is a really big debate within um, the fighting community whether how much running you should do and mm. whether you should do running and it's a bit and the, contentious yeah, isn't it? yeah pros and cons of that so that, that should be a good one to look at um third one was um i read a lot about aerobic fitness i'm not really sure what it means to an athlete and again yeah there's discussions we've had before about aerobic fitness and um bits and pieces which we'll obviously we'll cover again and it'd be good to just break it down and simplify what it is and uh, how it's going to affect an athlete yeah i mean that's just a fancy way of saying fitness your fitness level fitness level you know it's something that you can measure and everyone talks about aerobic and anaerobic and all these different different terminology but it's good to 
break it down, I think. So that that'd be mm. something that's good to cover. Uh, the fourth one um, is I've just started training and I want to fight someday. What are the stages of progression for a fighter? So that's quite a big one. So we'll, mm. we'll see how we go with that one. Um, otherwise, I'll put it on the next podcast. And the fifth one is what is meant by sport-specific training. And again, we can go into detail with that. So we'll see what we get through. And um, we try and keep it to an hour, an hour and a half usually with a, with a podcast. But we'll keep an eye on the time and... Um, hopefully uh you get something from this this one and hopefully we've answered your questions mm. i'm not sure if you can hear the pitter patter of rain in yeah. the background that uh we're in perth and it's uh in australia and and it's raining because it's middle of winter so I know. Um, excuse that that could be viewed as relaxing a relaxing background sound <laughs> and, I'm, and, I'm, and i'm going back to the uk where it's apparently raining heavy in summer so oh really I, yeah Oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah, it's supposed to be. Like, in summer, uh, it rains in the UK. I've never been yeah. to the UK. Yeah, they've just so. been through a heat wave. And like, day, what's some, a heat wave? No, but some days are, like, 30 degrees. Oh. Yeah, and apparently, um, but I think, say, the heat's different over there. So, yeah. like, and it, it is it's very, like it's a bit different, but you're more humid. Um, mm. But, yeah, apparently, it's got a massive rain due for July, which is mm. awesome. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But I got Sorry, some time no in Holland. Yeah. yeah. Got some time in Holland as well. So hopefully it's gonna be better weather over there. Fingers mm. crossed. Alright, so let's tackle this first one. Alright, so do women need to train different within a month based on the hormone changes? So how can we break this one down, Amanda? Uh you probably um you know the, the if you look at a, what happens for a woman in a month, she goes through uh, sort of three things. This is like changes that are different hormones that get secreted by parts of the brain, the bit in the brain called the hypothalamus. You've got uh, different hormones secreted, FSH and LH, in case you're interested, and they affect what's happening in your ovaries. And so you end up developing, like uh, uh, you're maturing a egg um, because basically the, the idea is is that the ovaries want to produce an egg, release the egg, and have the egg fertilised for procreation of the human race. So uh, you, you've, you're going to, in that sort of first half of your your hormonal cycle, so sort of day 1 to 14 or so, you end up with uh, pretty low uh, sort of oestrogen progesterone levels. And uh, so at that point, it's kind of similar to what you see in a man. And the, that's a, like, like, you know, you haven't got this dominating estrogen, which, yeah. uh, you know, you, women do secrete testosterone, the adrenal cortex. But uh, you, a, lot, a lot of people have a discussion about testosterone with women. Mm, so it might yes. maybe have a look at that afterwards because that'd be good to go through as well, I think. Yeah, I mean, we don't have huge levels mm. of testosterone. I mean, we, you get uh, androgens secreted by the adrenal cortex. And, uh, you know, men, you know, their testes produces testosterone, but they also get some testosterone from the adrenal cortex. And uh, women get a, release a small amount, you yeah. know, of testosterone. Um, in conditions like polystic ovarian syndrome, you get uh, increases of testosterone yeah. and decreases of the other hormones. So um, that gives it more of a male hormone um, profile. Yeah. But... When we for women, when you get reduced levels of progesterone and estrogen, yeah. which is in your day one, your sort of your first half of your cycle. So you cycle. said the first first day to the fourteenth, something like that. Is yeah, that like the first yeah. half. You know, if we break the your cycle into your typical twenty eight day cycle, yeah. Um, you know, the first half, mm. that's really where you can go hardcore. Mm. You know, in your training. Um, so like high intensity training, yeah, high um, intensity you training. You got higher um, energy stronger, levels there. You yeah. fatigue less. Yeah, um, and it's all due to the changes in your your um, hormone profile. Yeah, you know, reducing progesterone and estrogen. Uh, your body temperature mm. drops, um, so you're able to maintain core temperature a lot better. Um, you know, during exercise, sweat more. You uh, you, you fatigue less. Um, and you have, you know, you're able to generate a lot more power. Yeah. So that's where you would, you know, really push yourself in that first half of your, um, what we call the 
ovarian cycle, which uh, is like yeah. your hormone cycle. You know, it's like just looking at what's happening in your ovaries. Mm. And um, then you sort of have the, in the so middle what, what stage. What was our first section called? That first stage is called the follicular stage. Follicular stage, okay. Yeah. And then we'll move on to the second stage. The second after stage four, four, is four, ovulation. Right. So that's when that egg now has developed. Mm. In those first 14 days, you've been building it, building it, building it. Now it's big enough. It gets ruptured from the surface of the ovary and that's, you know, ovulation. Mm-hmm. And it gets released and eventually... Um, you know, travels down into the uterus waiting for a little uh, sperm to meet up with it yeah. so it can uh, create uh, fertilisation. So during... Yeah? Did you have a question? No. no. <laughs> so I thought you were going to say something. During I was that, just going to say in that section, so how long does that last for? Oh, only a few days. A few days. Yeah. And during those days... Um, those days, you, you're probably not as strong yeah. as um, your... You're still able to do high-intensity training... Um, you still, you know, generally fatigue less, but you have increases of, of estrogen during this stage. Yeah. And increases of, uh, like, LH is what causes the egg, luteinizing hormones yeah. secreted by the hypothalamus causes the ovary to release the egg. Yeah. And, but, and then as that, uh, you get increases in estrogen being yeah. released. And estrogen does affect... Um, weaken sort of your, your collagen and things like that in, in areas. So although uh, you could be do high-intensity training during these couple of days during ovulation, yeah, um, you are a little bit more susceptible to injury. Yeah. So that's really your big difference between that first half, what we call the follicular stage, and the bit where you're ovulating. Yeah. And then after that, that's the last sort of half or, or 13... Um, 12 or so days, Yeah, that that is where what we call the luteal phase. Luteal. And yeah. um, you've got a lot more progesterone during this phase, and of course... Which means? Uh, progesterone is, is um, a hormone which um, it, it's there to build, it's secreted to help build the lining of the uterus. Yeah. Because you've released this egg... And now we want the egg to go to the uterus and meet up with the sperm, and then th- those to uh, fuse and and uh, go in and bed into a u- the uterus. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. build the uterus. No, no, no. You get a lot of this blood supply, yeah. and then of course, if that doesn't happen, yeah. you shed that lining, and that's menstrual phase. Yeah. So in the luteal phase uh, is when menstruation occurs in the sort of latter half yeah. of it, mm. and during that phase is when Women are sort of at their shittest, really. That you know. So yeah. that's for a full twelve days. No, 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 no. So you get you get in those first th- those twelve days in the beginning of it. Yeah. You get the uh, lining of the uterus building. You get mm. progesterone being secreted, and then sort of halfway through it. Yeah. If that doesn't, if fertilization doesn't occur. Yeah. Uh, then you shed the lining, and that's menstruation. Cool. And yeah. this will be really. Great for guys listening. I know. To I'm so sorry. Yeah, but, but um, this was a question, and yeah. we don't hold back. So, so if, you know. if, we, if we take it. So back. basically, what this is saying is, yeah. during that menstrual phase, mm. you are at your weakest. You you high. You do your high intensity training more in that sort of first like two thirds yeah. of the month. Yeah. And then when menstruation, you would you could do some resistance training or low weights or, um, the, you know more. Um, just more low-key recovery type yeah. training, um, because um, you you're um, you know you you're really at your weakest in, and you're vulnerable, much more vulnerable mm. to fatigue and things like that. So you don't want to do as much high intensity. Yeah, because I, I mean I went to a co- uh, course once. I was doing I got you know I got to all the fitness courses yeah. and stuff every yeah. year. And um, this one in particular was how to train women differently. And I thought mm. I'd be interesting because obviously I train a lot of like girls at the gym and yeah. whether it's personal training or within classes. And um, yeah, it was quite interesting to see that obviously the different different stages of training, obviously when they should be doing like more high intensity training, mm-hmm. obviously where they should be doing maybe something like more yoga and more, yeah. more of them sort so of that, recovery. That, yeah. And then when, when they should be um, obviously somewhere in the middle, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it was yeah, really yeah. interesting in that way. And um, one of the things that were in the class, I remember being there and they asked to the, quit the, the the person who was taking that class asked the question and said, oh, how many of you 
in here I've done like fitness um, competitions before I was in like mm. fitness modeling and on stage yeah. and uh, I would say about 20 girls put their hands up and then and they said oh, out of those people who've done that before how many have dis- difficulties with your hormones now and regulating stuff or like, taking medication mm. and I would say about 18 put their hands up like they're yeah. really yeah. It, obviously it can affect like obviously if you're dropping low body fat or you're doing something as in high intensity and as as tough as that, it can have a knock-on effect on your hormones, and I just find yeah, that very I interesting. Yeah, I mean that's for definitely, you know, there's a bit that's been seen in in uh, you know um, conditions like um, uh, anorexia. You have yeah. what we call amenorrhea, which is when you have an absence of menstruation. Yeah. Because you've got such low body weight that affects your uh, your hormones. Obviously, the body thinks, "Oh God, you're so skinny. There's no way you're going to be able to." Um, support a developing fetus yeah so um that you know the hormone release by the in the brain changes yeah and then of course the um you you stop menstruating because you you don't uh, need to Mm. thicken the lining of the uterus yeah because your body's telling you obviously not your body's telling you don't want to yeah i can't i don't want to do that i'm too weak it's Mm. like i need to preserve myself yeah so it's uh, it's like halting you. Mm. I just find it interesting, obviously, the, the, how really if you did it like, if you if you worked out your training as a female or mm. as a trainer for someone, yeah. at certain times of the month you could be very precise and to get yeah. maximum output. Yeah, you know what I mean. You can yeah. you can uh, you know you get temperature changes and things like that. Temperatures drops when you ovulate. You you know a, a woman can generally map out their um, hormonal their uh, ovarian cycle yeah. and have an idea of roughly, yeah. you know, what stages they're in um, and therefore train a- accordingly yeah. towards that. So, you know, the, the training program for a woman should take into consideration their hormonal yeah. changes. Yeah, it's very interesting. Mm. I mean... Obviously, you can go into massive detail with this sort of thing, but yeah, yeah. obviously, we just wanted, yeah. wanted to cover that. But that, you know, simplistically, yeah. for you know, the take home message from that is you're at your best in your first half of your cycle, yeah. So, you know, once you, you which doesn't mean you, you can't train in that second no, half, but you just got to no. be aware that your body's gonna, yeah. you might be more fatigued, more fatigued. And, and you might do more. Uh, recovery sessions, stretch, flexibility, l- just less intensity. So we take it back to obviously fighters and stuff like that. Obviously, you're training people for something that's high intensity as that mm, or that kind of yeah. sport. Then it can be a psychological thing as well. So like, if you are getting more fatigued in that stage and you mm. don't realise that that's a natural thing that's going to mm. happen, you're thinking, yeah, oh, no, my fitness is not up. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you know, I you, could do this last week. Yeah, I could do it last week, week, but I can't I'm do it this week. What's happening? So, that, you know, there's an explanation there. And it's okay for guys because they constantly yeah. have testosterone. And yeah. It's like a, you know, uh, hasn't got this, this ever-changing pattern. Yeah. Well, so that is really interesting. I mm. think it's good for good for uh, female athletes to obviously have a good mm. understanding of this. Yeah. Cool. So I'll hopefully have answered that question mm. um, to an extent. Um, we can go into massive detail, but I think that's, that's no, pretty cool. No, it just cool. gives you a generalised guide, yeah. you know. It's... Um, yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the second question. So it was, should running be part of a fighter's training program? So I've got my own mm-hmm. thoughts on this. Um, Give us your thoughts then. You go first with your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, you've always got a debate of, of running. And it, it could come down to other types of training as well, um, which fighters have done for years. Mm. So there's some fighters so some trainers who've been training people for years and they've sent them out on massive long runs and they're saying that's what you have to do as a fighter that's what so and so did when he fought and he was a world champion that's what yeah. he, he did but I'm always thinking now obviously with the the more scientific approach and, and the shorter runs and the high intensity uh, stuff that we can do which is not as hard wearing on your knees mm. I'm sort of on the thought process is like that, that, that person for example say a high level um, boxer or a high level Muay Thai guy who's mm-hmm. always done the running and it's always part of the training they've always done it that way yeah. are, are they good because of that or are they good despite of that you know what I mean yeah. Is it, yeah. are, they, are they just going to be good anyway they would have been and, good and without it or, yeah obviously yeah. you're going to get benefits from running you're mm-hmm. going to get that 
I mean, um, some benefits might be psychological, which benefits yeah, exactly. they're, they're so, finding. So know, I mean, some I mean, people I, enjoy running, it's relaxing. It's yeah, I mean, I, I do it for a bit, of, a bit of thinking. I can go down the coast here because I'm not too far away. And mm. I do it more more for just get that little bit of fitness. And, and yeah. I, I don't do high intensity for the longer runs. No, I mean, um, But I like to think or listen to mm. music and, and really, really sort of, it's like running meditation, yeah, isn't it, it really? Is, yeah, I think so, a lot of people, yeah. um, you know, I used to hate it. It used yeah. to be like, Oh my god! How many more yeah. kilometers? And I just had to do. Used to have to do that mental talk where you go, just keep going to that tree, and then you get to that yeah. tree, and you go, okay, now just go to that bench park. And it was like, oh. But you do a lot of stairs as well, eh? Don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do once a week. I like run up about. 3,050 stairs to be exact. Not I only count. know that because yeah. I know I do 25 laps and there's 120 yeah. odd, yeah. And 122 stairs, which is well, really. What, what you do, you're crazy good at stairs. I mean, I, we go down to Jacob's Ladder, which is a, a big one in Perth. and Yeah, so that's about um, yeah. the stairs I do is about half of Jacob's Ladder. It's yeah. just a little bit over half. And I you think. do 25 of those, but you don't even stop, do you? So I do 25 of those, but mm. Jacob's Ladder, I do about 12. Which Sometimes is a lot. Sometimes 13. Because yeah. you're, you're not walking. But the thing is, I'm, I'm really light, you mm. know. I'm, I'm, um, those of you who don't know me, I'm pretty slim build. And um, I, I just use a lot of that elastic recoil to yeah. help me bound up. So I use, you know, your, your, your muscles have this elastic recoil that can sort of pr- propel you, um, mm you know, in terms of movement of whichever direction you want to go. Yeah. So I use that sort of to to help create generate that momentum yeah. of going up the stairs and you use less energy that way. That's like part of economy. Yeah. Economy is uh being able to perform something using less energy. Mm. So uh, you know, we both might I might have someone else and we both have the same amount of fitness. Yeah. You look at us, but I might have a better economy in terms of being able to use less energy or less oxygen to perform some movement or some um, that's just form of from genetics or no or that's trainable economy of a trainable. Is trainable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you're, you're um you're more economic mm. um if you're able to um like during uh fitness training if you have a good biomechanics of the movement. So you're saying that it'd be a trained technique to improve. Yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, your fighters, as you train them, and they're developing some technique, Mm. and in the the first early stages, they're not so good at it, they would waste a lot more energy trying to do that movement. And then once they've, you know, mastered it, um, they are, they are able to, to perform that movement using way less energy, way less um, oxygen mm. than they did previously, yeah, and no, so that's yeah. economy. That's you know your movements are more economical. I see what you mean? No, yeah, mm. that's a, yeah. I mean, in yeah, it's in, even it's in walking. In, like yeah. you see people walking, and some people when they Looks walk, like an effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they they go up and down yeah. as they walk. It's just such a waste of energy yeah. going up and down. You want to go forward. Yeah. So you know there there are pe- the way people run, the way people mm. walk, the way people do a lot of movements. Their biomechanics. That's why a lot of people do their movement classes now as well, mm. you know, like it's just breaking yeah. down some yeah. some of the movements and like the, yeah. like the ones we we have at the gym, you know, like uh, Sue and Matt teach, yeah, you know, it's very, great. Yeah, it's very classes. good. I, had, I was watching the other day and I was sat back because I was doing some work and they were, they were just walking, they were doing different types of walk yeah. and the movement and it was, yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy what it is, but if you bring it back to fighting and Thai boxing, I said jiu-jitsu, that's something that really relates because you, you get someone who comes into jiu-jitsu and they might be from like a strength background or really fit mm. but their their economy of movement is just mm. so wasted yeah and they get tired so quick and well, you're, you're and, just using yeah. so much more energy and then once you get a few a few um few weeks months uh, yeah. maybe years into yeah. it they're so relaxed when you're doing it and yeah. you can really just go for longer because yeah. you, because so your that's economy you know movement. that's a part of fitness that's trainable. You yeah. Know? There are some parts of, of fitness that aren't trainable. We can get into that a bit later when we talk about aerobic fitness. Yeah. But, you know, um, economy is something that's trainable mm. and we will get better at it. E- even things like um, increasing mitochondrial. I don't know. It's it, Mitochondria is something in a cell that makes our, and it helps make a lot of energy. So increasing the number of those, increasing blood supply, oxygen delivery, those things 
help with economy as well yeah. because you're able to uh, really keep tissues mm. supplied with adequate energy. Yeah. Um, at, you know, our sources of energy and, and uh, so, you know, you can use, that, having that good blood supply means that you're able to really utilise those fuels but only yeah. utilise enough to perform the work and mm. not use any excess so yeah, we get the, more, the better we get at something, yeah, the more economical we become. So what? So what are your thoughts? Just bring it back I'm to that running. question. What are, What are your thoughts about running? Because I said, obviously, went a bit, went a bit off then, but like, yeah, um, no, okay. but um, if we t- if we get back to that question, um, I'll say I think my my thought process is now is um is short runs, yeah, uh, definitely incorporating sprints within the training things yeah, like because that. Because your running is. Like mm. You've got to look at running. Is it long distance running, which is like this is you know, training this is what endurance? We're talking about yeah, I mean, what's yeah? Again, we go on the sport specific stuff. I mean, you want to get that aerobic threshold and things like that, but mm. um, be specific to fighting. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Um. Well. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it is. I, I do. I'm a strong believer in sport specific. Um. You know, t- this could we could maybe just bring that last question in here because it, it oh relates. what is meant by sports specific yeah, well, yeah why is you know, bring sports it now? specific yeah. training is like you know if you if you're a swimming champion uh you would swim as part of your training yeah you know mm. you wouldn't just go in and do weights that uh work your latissimus dorsi and your pec major which are big swimming muscles you, you know you would uh, have to actually perform the movement, you know, the breaststroke, perfect yeah. the technique. But you would also, yeah. like in sports, mm. you like in, in Muay Thai, boxing, martial arts, you look at movements, you, you analyse those movements, and you get an understanding of how the body works during those movements. So you look at, you know, your joint does this, and you use this muscle group to do that, yeah. movement of that joint and therefore it's probably best to try to um, work that muscle to strengthen that muscle mm. um, you know outside of your technical training but then there's also the thing of um, if you're using that muscle a lot within your training mm. and then you're trying to utilize that muscle group as well outside maybe mm. with heavier weight or loading it more then yeah. you can overuse that so it's, yeah. it's like that fine line as well mm-hmm. but yeah I know I see what you're saying about the sport specific training and you know it baffles me sometimes as, as in when we get some of the guys who are training and they do like a, oh, I'm doing this I'm doing this extra training when I'm doing this this and this whether mm-hmm. it's whether it's weights or, or whatever kind of training outside of of it, but they want to fight. Mm. And they go, yeah, use that to supplement it. So a couple of times a week, it's going to really help to supplement it. But, yeah. you know, I mean, you're not, but, you're, but not, you you're, can... not, you're not going into the ring to lift weights. No. You're, you're going to have See, to get... that's not... Yeah. And, and also, when you think of, like, lifting heavy weights, mm. uh, that your it doesn't take into any consideration um, speed, you know, velocity... Um, that that doesn't compare to say, you know, what is required required for strikes. Yeah. Strikes have to yes, you have to generate force, but you have to do it over a certain distance at, at a certain velocity. Speed yeah. is really important. Yeah. So uh, even though um, you, you know you, you conditioning type training, you, you would think about you know that. It's not just strength. Strength is just your ability to pick up something really heavy. I think you want to get that strength foundation first before you have to go on to anything sport specific. You build strength when Mm -hmm. you do, like say if you did, um, like an example is is when we do weight, hold weights, like say two kilogram weights. Yeah. And we, we, uh, you know, jab cross, (laughs) like jab cross hooks and stuff with the weights. Yeah. And that's um, us performing the movements, mm. but with some added resistance, some weights. So what you're trying, you are building some strength there because mm. um, you're generating, you know, force in the muscles, yeah. moving something from one point to another. But you're you're also wanting. It's not like you just do these jab cross these strikes yeah. slowly. Yeah. You're wanting to hold the weights and do the movements, and you and do it with. You know, proper techniques, but yeah. at speed as well. Over, but, and that is 
you know, our ability to generate power takes into consideration force and mm. speed, uh, you know, which, the velocity. In, in relation to that, which is really going off here, but oh, yes, I, I just, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just like saying... The, I'm like the digress queen. I'm saying I mean, that's interesting, <laughs> though, which is that we don't have mm. to... But we'll come back to it. But just in relation to that, with the punching with the weights, mm. I was reading a study the other day because it, it's something that a lot of boxers use to get, get the hand speed going. And the study that showed said that it didn't actually improve hand speed. Mm. It would improve your muscular endurance. Oh, yeah. Um, but the hand speed was not actually... Um, Sure to be an increase, mm. you know, because obviously yeah. you put them hand weights down, your hands seem a lot faster. You know, it's always yeah. that thing because you, because yeah. you, because you got nothing so in your light. hand. Yes, yeah. exactly. But um, I always thought that it would increase, but like that was just one study I, I read. But w- w- what's your thoughts on that? Um. Well, it's hard to say without reading the actual. Yeah, study. exactly. Putting you on it, the spot. You know, <laughs> like, is it a study that? You know, mm. there were only like ten people in it, or sports. You know, yeah, the, um, the, the group. To, I'd have to like look at this. We'll maybe come back to that next next exper- podcast. Yeah, again. I'd yeah. look at the experimental design mm. and see, you know, what parameters did they yeah. measure? Did they measure, you know, velocity, distance, force mm. production, power yeah. production, uh, work output, uh, which takes into consideration uh, velocity and distance, yeah. force production. Uh, Force and distance, I think it is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'd have to look at those sort of variables. Mm. Oh, that's fair enough, yeah. And but, it was just something that came to mind when, I, when you said about that. Because mm. I think things like, even if it was just endurance of the muscle, things like, we've got to have that when we're fighting because you find that you just like, you, your legs or your arms go, or your shoulders get fatigued very quickly. Mm. And you need to have that, as well as having that power and then that speed, we need to have some kind of endurance in there yeah. as well. Because And then that's why we, we well, do like stuff heavy, like skipping yeah. and we get the endurance in our calves and our legs yeah. and we do footwork. Yeah. And, you know, it's, I think it's a major part to incorporate having having stuff like that, which is working your endurance and well, like, say if you conditioning heavy your body. Weights, yeah. You do heavy weights, you're building strength in the muscle. Mm. And, uh, you know, we in, in martial arts, you want to generate power. Yeah. And so... Strength is a component of power generation. Mm. So, like when you look at all the different the va- the variables, you can uh, in a training program you might work on building your strength. Yeah. Because we know. And you would move to your power after that, which yeah, is what what which, usual programs yeah, go. Yeah. You would then ha- use, um, you know, you've got this strength that you've built, and then you would use that strength mm. to say. Um, Lift lower weights at a faster you know, velocity, but at a yeah, yeah much yeah. quicker rate, which is what it's, most people do. And I think yeah. people jump too fast because you know, you really had to have the, for me, say, if you came from something, say, you had a massive break from training mm. and you came back to it. And then I try to do something that really like power based or sport specific, yeah. I might get injured very easily. Oh, so, very I think so. as a way yeah. of training someone, that strength needs to be there mm. over a, a certain period first to yeah. get your body get used to it again. I mean, your body and then we to get to the power stage. Yeah. Like we don't we don't improve without placing stress. You know, mm. we, if we just put the same demands on our body, you don't mm. improve. Um. So we need to, to a certain degree. So this is the difficult thing. Is mm. like, we, what is that sweet spot? Mm. Of stressing out, in, increasing the demands placed on the body, yeah. but not increasing it so much that it makes us vulnerable to injury and yeah. fatigue and then illness, etc. And you know, we also don't want it to be under yeah. demand because then you're just not going to stress the body out. Because what what happens is you stress the body out during training, yeah. and then after training is when adaptation occurs. Yeah. Through recovery. Yeah, and yeah. over what we call overcompensation. Mm. So that, you know, you, you've you done this and this, stressed out these muscles, so I'm going to overcompensate. You know, I'm pretending to be a muscle here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to overcompensate by increasing protein synthesis to make yeah. more proteins in my muscle, thereby increasing the size and, and strength yeah. capabilities of that muscle. You know, mm. that's overcompensation. Yeah. Uh, and so that, and that's how we improve fitness. So... You, you want to increase 
the demands placed on it, but you, it, the, it's all about progression. Yeah, because, that fine line. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, so as you were saying, people come in and they've had a break and they just go hardcore. Yeah, because the, you, cause they remember how, the, mm. especially if they trained before. Yeah. Remember how yes, they, they used to the train. These, and, I, and I've been mm. caught out heaps of times, you yeah. know, and, I, and I've got a few injuries at the yeah. moment, which are, it just seems to snowball. Yeah. And then you sort of, you're out and you go back in too hard because... You just can't control yourself. Movements. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And your body, and your, your yeah. mind remembers what you're doing. So but it's you... always got to mm. be, uh, pro. You know, yeah. a progressive scale, mm. so that you just play increasing demand, the mm. demand that's been you've been placing on your body for you know yeah. that that time pre- just immediately previous. Uh, so if you've been basically sitting on the, your ass on the couch, yeah. your demand is pretty low, and so you don't have to do that much more. No. To increase that demand, thereby increase stress and then yeah. in lead to improvements, adaptation. Yeah. But then it's got to be progressive. It's got yeah. to. But and they I, say not to increase for 10, I think it's like, say, with heavy weights, you're supposed to increase 10 to 15% each week and a half. It is. God, don't quote me on that. I'd have to. If you want to know that, please contact me. I'll tell you the exact. I'd have to go back to the literature. But I, I think it's 10 to 15% each 10 days or something okay you increase your uh whatever it was that was your maximum yeah. before that um and uh so that's kind of interesting you know mm. very scientifically based how they've yeah. looked at this and looked at athletes and looked at you know what's the typical increases so yeah. that you place more demand at some demand but not too much demand not mm. too little and, and, of course, everyone is a bit different, but, mm. you know, you make a plan. And so, yes, you might do some heavy weights, you do less reps, heavy weights, you're building strength. And then uh, what are one of your, your major objectives is to develop power as a fighter. And power takes into consideration strength generation of that muscle and also how quickly the muscle can contract, which also looks at, the nervous system and the muscle, you know, because the nerves make the muscle contract. So, you know, you're looking at how strong is that muscle and also how quickly can we cause that muscle to contract and produce movement. So that's, you know, mm. your speed. Yeah. Uh, and so you might then, that y- your first component is building strength and your other component to your, your sport-specific training is then to increase speed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that allows you to generate more power. Power, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that that's sort of, you know, some components of your, your exercise program. But And then you're also going to have your very sports-specific training, which is your technique. You rep, know? Yeah, technique, but I'm replicating the movements through certain exercise movements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So you'd look at, you know, there are a lot of, um, you know, uh, physiologists and... Um, and human movement specialists that you know can look at a, a particular movement. Say if you look at a jab, yeah. you know, and you you look at everything that's happening in the jab, all the way from the feet to yeah. your head, yeah. and you can break it down. That you know, there's a there's a huge amount in the jabbing arm. Yeah, there's a huge amount of of shoulder flexion. And there's, right. a, and there's like a, a chain reaction as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So it is a chain reaction. It goes from your feet because, you, of course, when you do the jab, um, you're not just going to have your feet placed and planted s- still there. You, you, you know, you step forward with the jab. You've got rotatory movements of the body, you know, rotation of your torso mm. um, in the, the opposite direction. So if you're jabbing with your left, you rotate to the right. And, uh, you know, of course, you're going to step forward and you, you've also got... You know, flexion of the shoulder, yeah. extension of the elbow. Break it down. You know, every, every time I break it down, like with a with a with a punch, or with most of the movements, I put it down and throw on something. You know, because if you look, mm. at, everyone's thrown a ball or thrown something before, and then, so how do you actually throw it and then think about it and how it breaks down? There's, mm. there's definitely a chain of movements. Yeah, you don't about just keep your body from the, still and yeah. use your arm. Everybody but some uses some it. systems do. I mean, if you look at say like a karate punch, mm. um, there's a lot of rotation and it's like the same. Uh, turn of the body at the same time as when the punch is being thrown so you're losing a lot of energy mm. because it's like again 50% forward 50% going backwards so yeah, right. what we're trying to do is like throw our hip into a shot 
and have a chain reaction like throwing a ball. Yeah. But obviously from a tight guard, yeah. I'm not like gonna th- throw so him. So starting it. with your feet. Isn't yeah, it starts from no? your big toe all the way through the body. We'll call and, that a kinetic chain. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah. A, a chain through the body, and it ends up through coming through the, the two major knuckles yeah. at the end, and there's a lot happens between there, and they've got to go on different stages. But if you looked at it at normal speed, it looks like it's just a rotation. But there's definitely mm-hmm. there's, there's a system, and there's um. One goes before another and another and another, mm, and we can yeah. break that down. So yeah. when, when you break that down to someone, they're really they're like, wow, there's a lot to it, and yeah. this, this is how we generate more power, yeah. you know, and how we make it more efficient. Yeah, because you, you're mm. using power from other parts instead of just relying on your shoulder, shoulder muscles. Which a lot of people punch through the shoulders when they first yeah. start. Oh, I did, yeah. totally. It, mm. Actually, I found that a really hard component yeah. to, to learning, um, you know, the timing also, because... Even though once I started to get the fact that oh, okay, I need to actually rotate my body, yeah, what you know the timing of that rotation with with throwing the strike, yeah. you know, um, it's, it's like got to be timed, not so that it's bop, 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 and yeah. The last bit is the hit, Otherwise, yeah. it's disconnecting that yeah. that chain of power transmission through yeah. the body, you know, exactly. from the limbs to the torso to yeah. your arm, and uh, you know that occurs through. We have these kinetic chains, but I don't want to get into that. It's really something. Well, I'm probably what we should the do. Facial chains, you we know. Should like, we should head back to so, running. <laughs> yeah. Like, so running, you yeah. know, running is, um, you know, your long distance running trains endurance, your yeah. endurance, and of course, um, you know, endurance. It, you need to have uh, decent endurance, like as a fighter, you're doing like what three minute rounds. Well, it depends on what, what you're doing, but let me start off. You might do a three. Depends on what system and what martial art, but maybe mm. say for example a three two minute round. Yeah, yeah. That might might work its way yeah. up to a five three minute round. It could work up to, to a five five minute round. So mm. it depends on what system yeah. and suppose how we're going to be mean, training. I mean, the, the um, if you're sort of looking at your 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 system where you're you're only sort of doing uh, you know a minute to maybe even three minutes movement. That's a three minutes of exercise. High let's say, 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 let's take three two minute rounds for an amateur coming into a fight. Um, what type of running would you incorporate? Would you say from but, your back, from your scientific reasoning? Um, like your three minutes is, uh, you know, a type of energy system we can use that that gives quick energy without mm. uh, that that type of. Uh, an oxygen supply as well. Mm. You know, you when you train more than that, when you're exercising at high intensity longer than that, you tend to not be able to supply, um, you know, a, a, as much oxygen to tissues. So we we end up going to what's called anaerobic respiration. But before that, uh, it, you're less than three minutes. You are exercising using a system for energy production that gives us pretty quick energy yeah. like in the form of what we call ATP. And uh, that that's, you know, what you would be using in those those sort of... Some some believe it's te- two minutes. Yeah. But when you go beyond that and you, you can't really provide a huge, as much oxygen, we go into what's called mm. uh, an aerobic respiration. And, um, you know, that takes a sort of... Uh, a greater degree of uh, time to generate. So uh, long distance running would be not long distance. Ideal. Long distance endurance, you're uh, really relying on um, the oxidative system, yeah. which is the system where uh, you, you're training at, at low to moderate intensities. Yeah. And so we can use the system that provides so for it sport, provides really good energy yeah. supply in the mm. end. Um, oxygen has to be present. So yeah. you know when you increase the the intensity, your ox your tissues demand more oxygen. Yeah. So we you end up to a point where we can't deliver as much much oxygen as we need. Yeah. So when you're doing long runs, you know it's low intensity. You can provide enough oxygen. So you go through this slow producing yeah. type of energy production, but it mm. provides you with sustained energy. But when you're in in the ring in the or fight. in the so fight, so we're talking about sports specifically for the fight. That's what we're yeah, talking so, about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your subtle way of going? Uh, get back on track. What I'm saying is like sports specific 
you're training different energy systems. Mm. You know, your your first half of that that round yeah. might be the energy system where, um, you know, you're you're really just it, it, high intensity, really using that very quick. Yeah. Um, quickly generated type of energy production. Mm. And so you train that system. You need to train, uh, do high intensity training yeah. so that you build, you strengthen that system. When you do that, you increase enzymes and things mm. like that that help to support that system. Yeah. And so you're training your body to be able to uh, use that energy system for your energy production yeah. during high intensity exercise of you know, between one to two, maybe three minutes. Yeah. So if, if we were going to like sort of answer a question. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what I'm no, saying is yeah. then as you get into the latter half of yes. that, into the three minutes, into the four, the five, mm. that's more relying on endurance systems. Yeah. Cause, so cause you find these a lot long of, runs would help yeah. with that. So you find a lot of, um, there's a big difference in how people are trained. You get a lot, some of the MMA guys, um, just train high intensity stuff mm, and like the, the really short bursts. Yeah. But some of them are also now really doing a lot of things like like the triathletes and stuff like that, and mm. doing long endurance yeah, yeah. stuff. And they seem to be able to keep going and keep going. Yeah. And they haven't got that explosiveness that the other ones have. Yeah. And obviously going by their body type mm. um, and doing that way. So I mean, I suppose it's I suppose it's a mixture of both. And really, yeah, so it is. And you know, I would have thought. Uh, I mean, you do need endurance, mm. but. You know that explosiveness is uh, what I would have thought. Is what you have to like, yeah, like very high, like short sprints. Yeah, so but you stars. don't want to. You don't want to gas and and yeah. um and end up in the last minute of each round absolutely yeah. knackered and you have got nothing left. Exactly. So that's why you need to train both of these energy systems, the anaerobic and the aerobic mm. energy systems. So I get my guys doing longer runs, but mm. I, not, they're not that long. You know, no. I mean, I I think it's got more adverse effects in that it's going to start really wearing away your knees and yeah yeah and, yeah and things like that doing that yeah doing that long you much better stuff. if you're better off doing like what what k's are they like what maybe like gonna... maybe yeah, up to about five you yeah know, so sometimes five do a longer run during the, yeah but like, not at a slow pace you're better off doing sprints you know yeah. um where you're all of a sudden generating power yeah um for short bursts of time you're really going to use that what mm. we call the glycolytic pathway but the thing about that is, uh, you know, it generates a lot of lactic acid. Yeah. Which, um, you know, a lactic acid, I mean, we've got lactic acid being produced right now. Mm. You know, lactic acid isn't just produced when Through you're... Through talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like when you're just exercising, lactic yeah. acid is always produced if yeah. you find it in our urine all the time. But, mm. you know, when you uh, exercise high intensity... And you run out of oxygen, yeah. And you go through, you, you know, your glucose molecules gets converted to lactic acid, mm. and you know our body can then take that away, that lactic acid, and get rid of it. Yeah. Um, but eventually, we produce more than we mm. can take away, mm. and, and in fact, that's what's called your lactic threshold. You know, when what is the point at which you make more lactic acid in these highly working muscles yeah. then you can get rid of that because that and will stop you yeah, your training, that yeah, will stop yeah. you mm. you know you must you get muscle failure mm. your muscles stop yeah. so you you've either got to slow down yeah. so that you can give your body time to get rid of the lactic acid and you produce you want to get that threshold really high don't yeah. we really so then your threshold, that yeah. is something that's completely mm. trainable mm. You, you lack, yeah and lactic that, that's what we do threshold. training um, yeah when we do training, obviously we need to get that threshold mm. high. I mean, some yeah. of that I've always yeah. tried to do, and I think people are incorporating more different styles of training now, that not just um, explosives. Because a lot of people use things like with plyometrics and things like that, but mm. they're doing isometric holds now as well. Because yeah. again, it's sport specific to what they want, you know. Mm. So if you think about say MMA for an instance, you're doing you're moving a lot, you're doing fast motions, and then you're going to explode into someone. But then you yeah. might have them pinned against the cage. Where you're in that sort yeah, of isometric holding, hole, yeah. and then you got yeah. to explode again. That, so your you threshold, need endurance there yeah. to maintain these concentric mm. contractions yeah. of the muscles. Mm. You, you, that's where you need endurance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you know you, you're sus, just sustaining a a strong contraction, mm. and uh, so that you know highlights the need for for um, strengthening both of these systems yeah the system that allows you to keep going 
the longer yeah. at low to moderate intensities, and that's what we call the oxidative yeah. phosphorylation system or aerobic system. And then the anaerobic system is the one that's, you know, you really use that when high intensity, explosive mm. movements, but it's short lived, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, so it's you, just you trying end to. You up getting too much lactic acid and then uh, that's it. So I, I didn't run Zen, it's just really trying to tell the market tell the market so it's going to be more beneficial to you during the week so i think everyone's going to be individual with that mm. one and how much running they can really do yeah um i, I mean, think, you I could, think you it's very do, much beneficial like a, you could have components of uh like you know a 5k run um or you could do like a a kilometer mm. and then you have uh like a 500 meter or 200 meter sprint yeah so like interval interval yeah. running or, or fat like training that sort yeah, of stuff yeah because mm. that will then um, you know, you you're sort of working your 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 different energy systems. If you yeah. if you're sort of running at low to moderate pace for you know longer than three minutes or something, and then have a quick sprint so that you're really um, training that system that when you demand yeah. high which intensity, is, which is always a stable of, 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 of how I've always trained when I was mm, fighting. Yeah. Was to do like um, you'd, you'd run and you'd do certain sections where you're going to sprint and then you'd go back to a jog and then yeah. you'd go back to a sprint yeah. again. Yeah. And it, I think that would really replicate a fight yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, in how yeah. you, you you're always constantly moving, your heart rate's up at a high level all the time, yeah. but then you're going to go even higher. And yeah. You're going to explode. So I, you, I think yeah. that that sort of that covers that question in that. Yeah. In that we. Running so can be very running, beneficial. Happy running. <laughs> yeah, um, we, these are the ways to get around it. I mean, I have a lot of people who have maybe injuries with their knees and things mm. like that, and or their ankles, and they can't run as much, yeah. or they can't run at all. Yeah. But with obviously with the different t- styles of training and the equipment we can get now, yeah, it doesn't mean that you have to run to no. fight. You know what I mean? That you, yeah. you can work around it and yeah. um, get just as good benefits yeah, just, just can, an easy way you can look up things like you know endurance or high intensity type training to yeah. see some examples of other things i mean some like people do stuff uh, yeah and, and things like that and, yeah. and riding on a it. bike or something like that where yeah. you, you you ride on the bike and then you do sprints and yeah you know that's training those two systems the aerobic and anaerobic energy producing systems so yeah i find with myself just for the training i can run um but sometimes I've got I've got knee knee issues. Mm. So like yeah. if we go too long or it's too much of a like um, it's a decline that gets me really uh, not the incline which is oh, yeah, just strange. Eccentric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would be the mm. angle. Yeah, yeah, the angle for yeah. my knee because it's to do with my yeah. the cartilage in my knee and, and it's you know yeah. it's a shearing force mm. as you're coming down. Or the the yeah. femur wants to shear across the surface. So I find it much the harder. But then. I've been adopting that, like, you know, Jacob's ladder and things yeah. like that. I've been adopting that yeah. more in my training, and I found it doesn't doesn't hassle me at all. Yeah, which you haven't is, got that. Mm. You haven't got that downward shear force. Yeah. As much as you know that it's the angle, the angle. of the femur yeah. on the tibia that, that that's the big bone. You've got to work around your body and injuries yeah. and how you move and again. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite interesting to do. And there's no point, you know, if if running does create injury or pain for you. Yeah. There's no point doing it. You know, no. there's other things you can do to, to yeah. increase your aerobic. But I think there's a mindset as a fighter, oh, I have to do the running, I have to do this, I have to do mm. that, and I'm going to push through and do it regardless. Yeah. But yeah. it's like, no, you, I think as you one. get older, yeah. you start to think, no, I'm going to train smarter. Yeah, yeah. But when, when you're younger, you can't really, you can obviously advise someone and you coach them a certain way, but sometimes they'll just, you know, they'll go, oh, mm. no, I'm not injured now and... You know, but yeah, yeah you're gonna you, you're gonna get you're injured. Young, you always think it's not <laughs> yeah. gonna happen to me. So exactly. It's like, you know, we live and learn. Exactly. Some some people. It'd be, train be better smart. if we learned and lived. That, you know, that would <laughs> exactly. be yeah. Uh, so so that, see, that was I think that's answered pretty pretty full pretty um well there. Oh my um, gosh, we've only done two. And it's about fifty three <laughs> minutes. Yeah. yeah. No, we haven't really. We covered the third. Oh, we covered, yes, yes, we covered yes. the sport oh, specific yes. trend as well. Right. We, you are right. And then we then we sort of started to go into that oh, anyway. Oh, this aerobic fitness. So the question yeah. was, I've read um, a lot about aerobic fitness, and I'm not sure what it means and to an athlete. So we sort of started jumping into that a little mm. bit there. Yeah, so we talked about an aspect of it. Did, did you want two to, aspects of it actually? Did you want to jump into that and just yeah, just I mean, cover that quickly? Aerobic fitness. Um, I've talked about aerobic and anaerobic energy production and aerobic and anaerobic. So this is where people get confused yes. between the so two. I'm so to clear let's that break up. down some definitions yeah. here with those. So you've got exercises. Exercises, like 
Anaer uh, anaerobic means without oxygen. I mean, we're never without oxygen. We have reduced oxygen, but an means without. So anaerobic is without oxygen. Anaerobic is in the presence of oxygen. So as I, I mentioned previously that, you know, we can do exercises that uh, stimulate the energy producing systems in our body uh, when there's oxygen there, aerobic, or when there is an oxygen there, anaerobic, like when you're working hardcore, high intensity, you know, you, you uh, so they're, they're, that's the type of energy systems. How do we produce energy when there's heaps of oxygen? How do we produce energy when there's not so much? And based on the energy production, we can do exercises that work those. So like anaerobic exercises work the anaerobic energy producing system. Anaerobic exercises produce the uh, stimulate the aerobic energy producing system when, when you've got oxygen. So that's like exercises and energy production. Mm. When we talk about aerobic fitness, yeah. it's it's got nothing to do with that other stuff I've just talked about, exercises yeah. and energy production. Which well, I think that's where it's, people get real confused. Yes, yeah, and it's, yeah. it's like, you know, it is very confusing and uh, I can understand that, but uh, it's aerobic fitness is just like a fancy way of saying your fitness. Yeah. You know, don't worry about all... Uh, it, the reason why we have the word aerobic in it mm. is because the way we measure, measure it is by looking at, your um, oxygen usage. So we're looking at VO2? So VO2 max. Yeah. VO2 max is basically, you know, your oxygen mm. usage during high intensity training. Yeah, right? so, because I think what we obviously people read a lot online now and yeah. they're looking at different yeah. stuff and they're, they're coming across these terms and they have a basic, oh, I think I know what aerobic is and anaerobic mm. and VO2 max, oh, yeah. so I think what it is. So it's always good to break them yeah. down and then... It's like your maximum oxygen delivery. Yeah. Like, why is that important? Mm. Well, the cells, your muscles, are working really hard and they need oxygen mm. right, in order to help produce some of that energy. Yeah. So... Uh, you know, without oxygen, they basically become what we call hypoxic and they die. Yeah. So, you know, you're looking at how does oxygen get to your cells. Yeah. You know, are you doing a good job of that? Are you delivering a mm. pretty good amount of oxygen? Yeah. Or is it shitty? Yeah. You know? Like, and and so when you when you measure VO2 max, you're measuring what we call cardiac output mm. because that's looking at the heart. Yeah. Because what's getting the blood that has the oxygen in it to these tissues? Yes. Your heart pumping yeah. it around the body. Mm. So firstly, you've got to look at that. Then you measure how much oxygen is in the arteries and compared to the veins. Yeah. Because blood goes through arteries and then through capillaries and that's where the oxygen leaves the blood vessel and goes yep. to tissues. Yep. And then blood goes into veins. So you can imagine you would have less oxygen in the vein. Yeah. You've delivered it to tissues already, already. Yeah. So, you know, you can look at someone's arterial oxygen supply and venous oxygen supply mm. and you can compare them and see, well, there's heaps of oxygen here in the artery, but a lot less in the vein. Therefore, mm. you've really given your cells, your working cells, heaps of oxygen. Yay, that's good. That's showing that your oxygen delivery to tissues is awesome. Mm. So, you know... So there's a lot of fighters are using the VO2 max testing now to yeah. see where they stand. Who is the fight you, you were dealing with looking at someone? Oh, else? yeah, Jack. Oh, yes, he, Jack, I mean, Jack, Jack Becker. He's, yeah, he's yeah. just like in the... Uh, I think 90-something percent. Yeah, so Jack, like that, Jack's, that literally Jack's is like, the uh, uh, like one of our MMA, MMA fighters yeah. at the gym, uh, um, at the Osborne Park um, gym. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he did a, and, he did a and, test yeah. and he was telling us about it. And yeah. It, it, he, it, he, like, they looked at, amongst other things, they looked at two things. So they looked at this VO2 max and he was 90-something percent, you know, he's in the top, um, you know, top 10%. Of, of the population, you know, most people, yeah. uh, their VO2 max is like about 40 or so. This is know, 90. 30, yeah. Oh. I think it was 90. No, 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 it was, it was bloody, it, he's in the top 90%. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. His was um, 60, 
64, I think, or 63. Yeah. You know, most people's are between 30, 40. Women's VO2 max is usually less than males' VO2 max. Yeah. Uh, that's all a capacity type thing, but mm. um, yeah. So he was in the you know the the top, the top yeah, mm. like um, the ninetieth percentile we would say, which is the top ten percent. So pretty fit of the world. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, your VO two max. Uh, a lot of how good you are at it mm. is your genetic makeup, your structure. You know, right. you can't change it so much. Yeah. What like his will never get any better. Yeah. Like you know, he he's trying. So that's see, that, that's something hard hard to um, fathom. Com- fathom yeah. or comprehend because you think, well, no, if I train harder, mm. if I train longer, if I, if I do. I it mean, for are more you going to improve your your heart's ability to pump blood around your body? Mm. You know, you, you, you can ch- you yeah. can. It's like you can improve it. Like you can start off really with a crappy VO two max. Yeah. And you can improve it to a certain degree, and then it'll get to. I mean. You know, he's in the uh, Jacks is sixty four or sixty three or something. Mm. You know that that is amazing. That is what what beyond excellent mm. VO two max. Yeah. You know that's the ma- the best his heart is ever going to be. Yeah. That's the best that his blood vessels traveling through his body delivering oxygen to tissues are going to be. Yeah. He's improved it to it just can't improve anymore yeah right so so that you know not that's not that's something that's looked at uh, and that's your maximum oxygen supply now uh, there's another thing that they look at when Mm. they're assessing aerobic uh aerobic fitness is they look at your lactic acid threshold which we talked about a little bit before yeah so that's like when you generate when you're producing uh, when, you know, when there isn't much oxygen present, you're using this glycolytic pathway, producing lots of lactic acid, mm. you know, and your body gets rid of it and everything's cool, but then you get to a certain amount and it, it's way more than you can get rid of. That's your threshold. That will stop you in your tracks or at least slow you down. Mm. Now, we, you... you Uh, Like, that's trainable. You can improve your lactic acid threshold, Mm. you know, and as we get fitter and fitter and fitter, it's called your your aerobic capacity, your lactic acid threshold. As we get fitter, you know, we can improve this and therefore our fitness improves. Mm. Um, But the most important thing, which Mm. really differentiates, because you might have two people, two fighters, Mm. and they both have the same VO2 max. Yeah. But what might differentiate them is the that threshold. the threshold, because yeah. this person can go, keep going a lot longer yeah. before they get too much lactic acid that makes them which stop. Will be, which will the other person make a yeah. lot of difference with the kind of training mm. they're doing and how and much And you want that that threshold to be as close to your VO two max as possible. Yeah. Because your VO two max is your best. Yeah. That's the most oxygen you can supply. Yeah. So you you don't want to get to that threshold that too much lactic acid mm. early then, yeah, you want to get to it as close to your VO2 max yeah. as, as you can and yeah. I calculated it for um, for Jack and his was 90 something percent you right. know so that means he's really his threshold is really close to yeah. the point at which he's at his VO2 max which is awesome that's really good yeah mm. that's cool legend yeah. I think that sort of covers Covers that a little bit, yeah. you know. What I mean, because it is it does get complicated, especially if you're not in the fitness industry, or even if you are, mm. you're never gonna like know everything like hundred no. percent. You know what I mean? You're always yeah. learning stuff, and people throw these terminologies um, around, and they have an idea. Everyone's got an yeah, idea, yeah. but it's good to it's, it's good to have a good knowledge of it. Confusing. Yeah, I mean, especially when you got this word aerobic, and it's used mm. uh, in reference to exercises that you do when there's lots of oxygen or aerobic. Uh, metabolism and that's mm. what happens when your cells make energy when there's lots of oxygen and then you've yeah. got this aerobic fitness which yeah. is just saying okay how fit are you how good are you at supplying oxygen to your tissues yeah. you know that's so that's really confusing but it is it is good to know that there are components I mean that's why we get better at things because we we uh, yes we might Im- be able to improve our our VO2 max, we certainly can improve our lactic acid threshold. Yep. And then, as I mentioned before, another component of fitness is economy. Economy, yeah. Being able to... So there's two that can really yeah, make a big on. difference. And one, yeah. you know, you can improve a little bit, but the, the, and the two... And in your training, so. 
in that sport specific training mm. you are improving your economy Econ- economy is such a massive thing mm. you know like when you get get an understanding of that mm. and how you can just move better and, mm. and not waste te- energy why all that yeah. technique um yeah. technique training yeah you know in addition to your resistance and your endurance training can y- y- your strength and conditioning stuff mm. why all those those are uh, you know, training sessions, perfecting yeah. your technique yeah. and making really you've got automatic the... movements, mm. why they're important because they, they basically you're going to be able to do That's them. That's what you're using. So you basically you've got, you've got your sport, whatever it may be, and you need stuff to sort of help with that speed, help with the mm. power. And yeah. all additional training you can do, but the majority of training you should be doing is the actual sport because that is what you're yeah, competing in. That's exactly and, and right. And people somehow sometimes get that wrong and they think, oh, I've got to do yeah. more of this, more of that. But your other training is there to support support yes. your movements mm. that you're going to to help those movements exactly. that you're doing during your sport. Yeah. So those other training things, you got to you know view them and think, okay, what is it about this mm. training method that will help me? Mm. In my sport, yeah, you know, so there's got you've got to see that there's that connection there, you yeah. know, and it could be, oh, this is going to help me because it strengthens my endurance systems, mm. my my uh, 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 type of aerobic type um, exercise systems yeah. that are you know maybe longer runs that type of thing, uh, you know, and so you've got to try to correlate it and how that will yeah. uh, benefit your you in your sport. Yeah, hundred percent. Mm. Yeah. Um, so we pretty much covered that four questions because mm. one of them came into one and we had the, the last question as well so we're at an hour yeah I think you so, can, right, what, do you, you want to tackle that one another time no we'll do it now oh okay, right, okay. unless you, unless you no, got, no go I'm just saying I've got, I've got it in me hey? I've got it in me I can go yeah I reckon we, we get them yeah, all no. out just, they've asked the questions it's good it's good that we've um, got such great feedback <laughs> and, um, and that uh if you ever want to ask any questions obviously yeah. on the Facebook page yeah. go in there and ask the questions we will put them into the podcast because you know? we want to talk about stuff that yeah. uh, is relevant to you or that you would like to know more about you know because we find rather it than having our own agendas and yeah I mean, the... we obviously we have a massive interest in very similar things to do around fitness mm. I mean I know, I know yours is massively to do with nutrition as well and also fitness is mm. such a huge you know, oh Massive, my gosh, there's yeah. so many things about it. I mean, yeah, I love me. Like, I have a bit of an, a God, don't even get me started with nutrition. I could, I, I could literally talk. So we're like, probably <laughs> going to do a podcast purely on nutrition yeah. because you know, Amanda's going to lose it. Uh, if like, don't yeah. uh, like, I provide a overview of you mm. know the latest scientific findings in terms of nutrition and and also you know nutrition in uh, in general people mm. you know that don't exercise we just want to just obviously some people, are, some people are really interested in nutrition because they want to look look better mm. other people won't want to do it because they want to be better at the sport other people yeah. want, there's all different reasons yeah why. i mean there, there could be weight loss I- improving body composition mm. uh but also you know you can you can eat to reduce inflammation you can eat to mm. stabilize blood sugar levels you can eat to uh increase energy production mm. And again, um, that could be another thing because there's so, mm. so much information out there. It can be confusing for yeah, people. Yeah, you know? there's so much. But um, we, we also have to be, or bear in mind that everybody's different. And uh, so, you mm. know, there, there's no yeah, one, one, yes. one yeah. uh, sort of diet that everybody should be on. But I think people, some people like get a good effect from one sort of eating say diet yeah. for example yeah. and then, then they'll defend that are, to the to, yeah. to the end and it's yeah. like well you're different you're going to act different differently with your body yeah. to someone else I, I, but, there's a, a study in israel just yeah. let me quickly touch on this okay i promise I'll so we're stop. moving over to israel <laughs> <after school. laughs> like it's a big finding yeah. where they put everybody on the same food mm. and they looked at how that changed like insulin and their glucose uh, levels in their blood yeah. and you would think okay well if everyone was going to eat this amount of carbohydrates this amount of protein they all e- ate exactly the same food for so their had, body weight yes for yeah, their body yeah. weight mm. so uh, it all provided the same macronutrients and, and micronutrients etc yeah. and 
uh, there were massive, you, know, you would think, okay, if, if everybody's going to be awesome on this low carb diet or, yeah. um, you know, high macronutrients or whatever, uh, you, you would uh, high, like as in high protein or low fat or whatever, um, you would think everybody would respond in the same way. Yeah. But they didn't. You know, mm. some people, this same food yeah. decreased their insulin um release of the pancreas and other people's it increased you show me that one i think i've i've, I've heard I've about that one i probably waffled it on yeah. on to you because i was like i don't know if i've heard it on a podcast i was so excited it about it yeah and then uh so then they were like what you know mm. everybody's sort of responding a little bit differently you know it was really really variable it shows you how everyone's different so the what they did yeah. is they looked at the microbiome mm. they uh you know took stool samples and uh, check the, the types of bacteria and things like that inside nice. their poop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's and a shit job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, God, dad joke. Uh, and uh, those that had this certain microbiome, certain yeah. bacteria and things like that, they all responded similarly to this diet. Maybe it was increasing. Oh, so it's just, okay. Was, uh, and those that had a... They, they had a, a predominantly different types of population of bacteria. Mm. They all s- seemed to respond to that food in the same way. Yeah. So their response to these foods was um, predicted by their microbiome. The, so you, the bacteria that we bacteria. have. Well, which is so much study is coming out regarding oh, heaps that now. There, yeah, heaps. Which is, a lot in Australia as well. It's kind yeah. of exciting. But, mm. but um, it does show that um, you, you know, foods have different impacts on people. Yeah. Firstly, that's the first finding, mm. and that that could be explained by your microbiome. Mm. That's real interesting, isn't it? So it's your maybe, fault. You got maybe, me started on nutrition. I think maybe what we can do is for the next one. Because I'm not sure. Say we. I said we're going to answer this last question, but mm. I think maybe for the nutrition one, whether we do it the next one, the one after, depends on which um, coaches I'm going to interview while I'm away, possibly. Um, and obviously we've got um, yeah, so you might, coming over. Well, there might be it? a few in between yeah. uh, of guest speakers yeah. um, you know, while you're travelling. But, but maybe if you've we'll got the Facebook page and if you have any questions specifically yes. on nutrition, yeah. answer, we'll ask them because it's such a, such a big thing. So ask, them, ask those questions and post, obviously, with a, uh, with a um, you're going to do it through a private message on there. I'll just post it on the actual uh, Facebook page itself and then we'll mm. get to that and we'll, we'll answer those during the... During a sorry, and no podcast. question is stupid, right? I because some stupid questions. <laughs> except ones that come out of Steve's mouth, <laughs> they're pretty stupid. But but like you know, you, a lot of people feel intimidated to ask a question. But mm. nutrition is a very complex thing. Yeah, and um, you know, it could be something as simple as do I eat before training or mm. do I eat after training? That You know, not, like, it doesn't have to be a really complex question. No, just, and I think just one that think, you want answered. That's that's the criteria. I think people think they should know a certain amount. But, like, yeah, again, there's nothing, nothing mm. stupid not yeah. about them sort of questions. You know, like, in, uh, you're never going to learn everything. No. You know, you're never going to... And no. the research is going to change all the time. But we're just going to go with what we know at this stage and... Give our opinions. Mm. All it is is opinion, yeah. isn't it? Through the re- from the research that um, obviously we've gone through. Yeah. So you can you can post it on the Facebook page, or mm. if you don't want it uh, that uh, visible, you can just you know PM us and. Or you can just text the mandra on zero. <laughs> 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 so okay. So we're gonna okay. go up to question five. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So we're gonna Last go. One. What is? What's the question? That's different. No, one. this read one, that one here. I've started training. Oh yeah, I've started yeah. training. I want to fight someday. What are the stages of progression for a fighter? So it's quite, it's quite a broad one because obviously if you look at biographies of different fighters or different coaches who train people, they've gone through different things, you know, and, and how they get to the stage of fighting. But we'll, we'll have a sort of an overview, I think, mm. and we'll sort of talk about it from my background of dealing with different fighters from different different places around the world and people I've coached before. Um, usually... The first stage is obviously they'll come into the gym. <laughs> they'll, they'll come into the gym and stage one, gym arrival. <laughs> e- even even from uh, day one, sometimes you get people coming in and go, "Oh yeah, I really want to get into this, and I want to really fight someday." And, sometimes, and they've got some... all different ways of getting there, haven't they? Yeah. Like why they got there, and they saw someone else, or they. And, and, and sometimes it's from the from the get go. It's like, oh, I want to fight one day, and then eventually we'll get there. What and... got you to the gym first time? Um, 
uh, monkey magic. <laughs> <laughs> High five to monkey magic. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, when I, I started when I was eight, because um, I was really into, um, I like kung fu movies and things like that when I was younger, but um, there's a program called Monkey Magic and it's <laughs> back in the day and then I watched it recently and it wasn't as good. <laughs> it was quite cheesy, but um, yeah, I used, to, I used to love it. And What, him on the cloud? Yeah. It looks so real. <laughs> yeah, well, I think they're doing a remake apparently. Yeah, yeah I know, yeah. So, yeah. Um, anyway, if you haven't seen it, Check it out. Yeah, it Google is, Monkey Magic's hilarious. Hasn't, hasn't oh, aged at all, but um, <laughs> yeah, it had martial arts in that, and I really loved it. And yeah. I, I really plagued my mum to let me go to do to do a martial art. And mm-hmm. the one local to mine was a Taekwondo school, so that's what I started in Taekwondo. And uh, yeah, just because I'd practiced so much at home, like I thought I'd done something before. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're going, no, you haven't. Who's your stuff trainer, before. Monkey? Yeah, Monkey, Monkey Magic. Watching on TV. <laughs> So yeah, I started on that and then obviously went through, you know, I went through that system and... So you do, how long did you do Taekwondo for? Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe eight years. Oh, mm. so you didn't I got to quite a high level, I, mm. I, I fought nationally and, and won quite a few titles in, mm. in Taekwondo and I got to my black belt um, probably when I was 14 or something. Yeah, um, I, yeah I did it for a while, yeah, maybe, maybe seven years. And why did you swap to, to Muay Thai? Well, I moved, I didn't, I wanted some, I really got into the thing of um, interest in conflict. Mm. Uh, and then obviously, you know, I thought I'd get to black belt and I wouldn't get nervous in these situations and and doesn't really change anything. Like you yeah, watch the yeah. movies and I did watch a lot of movies, which yeah. I still do. Yeah. And you thought, oh, you know, you get to that stage where you're that black belt and you're not going to get nervous in conflicts yeah. and you're not going to, you're not going to be scared of anything and it doesn't really change anything. It's just like, it's sort of obviously a journey to that point and then you've got to keep going. So I was looking for something more effective. Yeah, yeah, right. So I actually moved over from there over to like more of um, like a hybrid system with, which had a lot of uh, Filipino martial arts in, which was a screamer mm. and, uh, and and Cali and uh, had some groundwork stuff in there as well and it was more incorporating boxing and tie boxing kicks, I'd say, but it wasn't mm. like traditional. yeah. So I did that for like did that for a while and I really got into that which is um, if you don't know much about um, Cali it's like stick and knife defense and empty hand stuff and oh, yeah. incorporates a bit of everything yeah, so right. it's more like more like street work stuff mm. and then it's from like, there reminds me of stuff off the movies yeah it looks pretty cool when you yeah. do it you know I do a lot of trapping and things like that mm. and and hybrids the, the system we did was a bit of a hybrid and then. Um, then I really want to like really get into competition because I've always been like really into into competing. So that's where I moved to boxing and Muay Thai, which mm. I've done for the last twenty plus years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then obviously with the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well, and because mm. I really want to compete in um in Muay Thai and especially MMA, yeah. especially when the UFC came out. Yeah. Right. So I remember getting the first UFC. Actually, actually it was UFC. Yeah, number two. Um, and I got it. I got it ordered in on VHS. <laughs> and <laughs> oh then my I watched it. I was like, "Oh my god!" Showing your age here. Yeah, no, and I was like, "Wow, oh, this is amazing." There wasn't a lot. In, <laughs> there wasn't a lot in the UK. Look at it, this fast forward and rewind. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. And, How uh, inconvenient. Yeah, and I really just want to. Oh, I want to fight in that. And yeah, the first couple of fights. So what's your like? A, as in your stage, you sort of, you know, you you started training mm. with this. You, yeah. Then you decided, oh, I want to compete. Yeah. Well, mine's a bit different because I started in in a. A martial art and I moved to a different martial art yeah. and I started com- I've competed yeah. in a lot of different things and then I stuck with like a lot of co- like a lot of fights in like Thai boxing mm. and mixed martial arts um, and that's where I sort of like found my, found my way in that yeah. one but say if someone comes into the gym because I was digressing then as well <laughs> but, uh, well yeah. done proud of you proud <laughs> yeah. of you but um so as soon as someone comes into the gym and say I want to fight or whatever, mm. then they'll come in and the basic thing is first is it's learning the technique because the, if they haven't done anything before, they're going to have to learn how their body moves. Mm. And then, so we're going to learn learn the techniques and that's going to become more natural because at first it's very cognitive, which yes. you'll say. and it's very stilted, isn't it? Again, Disjointed. It, it starts off like, I say, I always put it down to what everyone does is learn how to drive a car. So you mm. start, start off with driving a car, you're thinking about everything when, oh, I'm, che- yeah, when I'm checking so the mirror, boring. when I'm changing gear, when I'm pressing the accelerator, when I'm doing this, when I'm checking outside, that you're thinking about everything. Mm-hmm. Then suddenly, now, now you drive somewhere 
and you, sometimes can't remember how you got there or mm. you're doing multiple things thinking yeah. about stuff when you're so getting there automatic subcon- yeah. you know in, involuntary almost sub- at a subconscious level yeah that, is that autom- is it automotive stage is automatic, that yeah. yeah yeah um so that's that's we're getting the sort of subconscious so we start off we're never going to be there for a little we're not going to be there for a while yeah. so we've got to get we've got to learn the techniques mm. there's a lot of techniques there's to learn repetition and repetition, yeah repetition repetition everything. yeah and we've got to get past that stage and refine it some people like get a bit of the bit of the techniques and they're mm. going oh, i think i'm ready to fight and i'm like oh no not really no <laughs> yeah yeah because then you've got to put that into it into like the player part of stuff so which is mm. our sparring yeah. you know so once you learn the techniques and you start to get it down and we start bringing i'll bring it in quite early the sparring because i want to get people to get that reaction and get that mm. a lot comes down with distancing comes down with time and yeah. comes down to how someone else moves and how you're going to move with them and that's sport specific stuff. Yeah, isn't very it? sport it's like specific. Trying so trying to emulate what's happening in a, a yeah. fight. People will often hold like some some coaches will hold people back from sparring, but I like to incorporate it in the more of a playful way at the be- mm. near near the start once they've got the yeah. best techniques because they're gonna come on a lot faster, I think. Yeah. And then um we still learn that technique and we're getting getting that more automatic and then once we start sparring, then we start to increase the sparring where it might go a little bit harder at times or we're going to start seeing things when people are starting to become more efficient in sparring. Then we go, okay, okay, you're getting to that stage now. Where, Economical. Yeah, it's Economy more, is improving. Economy. So we yeah. didn't mention that before. Yeah. And then you're <laughs> going, tying oh. things in. And that's the stage I'll start watching someone and going, oh, yeah, mm. I think, you, think you're probably at the stage now where we can get maybe an interclub sparring mm. or we can do something a bit more intensive yeah. and we'll start like looking at a journey and the, and the um, map out a journey to where we can actually fight, yeah. you know, sort of thing. So it's different for everyone because the question I get asked the most is, oh, um, I know I know I've just started, but how long does it take before you can fight? Mm. Well, it depends. Like, how long yeah. is a piece of string, you know? Yeah. There's going to be a lot of different variables in how you pick things mm. up, how much are you training. Yeah. Um, how long what, does it what, take, you know, that, that getting yeah. making movements automatic is yeah. not just like, oh, it could, takes everybody six weeks. Yeah, so take, you could you fight know. right now, but I don't think you're going to do yeah, very well. Your percentage is going to be down, yeah. yeah. But you've had, I've had guys who've come in and within three months they've been able to compete. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, and they've just been... Very very athletic and yeah. they may be able to get through it, it other people have took them a long time it depends on how your time. body moves and yeah. you know coordination how, how you're able to pick up yeah. you know, those mm. specific movements and you know if you're able your body has moved in that way or a similar way or likes moving in this particular mm. pattern finds it easy then you're going to get to that automatic yeah. stage of, yeah. of motor skills of movement mm. skills mm. quicker no, and some people um, will never get there, you know, yeah. because it's just that they're, uh, well, there's many factors, but they you know, it could just be that functionally, the, the their biomechanical, uh, um, mo- you know, their movements yeah. biomechanically are uh, not conducive to. Yeah. They can do the, the same. art of boxing. They can or do the same training as one or, person. Can do the same training as another person. Mm-hmm. And they're going to reach different levels in the end, you know, yeah. sort of thing, in, yeah. in, in how well they're going to perform stuff. And, and, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, we, uh, so when we get to that stage and we're, like, obviously preparing for a fight, then obviously we want to, it would be ideal to have, like, a, a, quite a few weeks to obviously really start in, increasing. Because during that time when we're obviously learning the technique, we're also trying to condition our body. Mm. And we're trying to condition ourselves with fitness as well. Mm. So we're doing a lot of things there as well that, needs to be ready so we're not just going straight into a fight camp yeah, where we're yeah. trying to condition the body then it's too yeah. late you know like in in a fight camp like leading up to a fight mm, mm. Um, like what's the difference say um maybe eight weeks or something yeah. before a fight yeah. compared to two weeks before is there any difference is it there's know? there is because people, people say if you got I, I had a i've had a couple of fights so i've had three days notice and it's yeah. <laughs> it's been like the only reason i took those is because i was I was training regular, and I thought yeah, I could yeah, take it. And it was an opportunity, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But um, you can get you can get quite a lot of improvements within two weeks. Yeah. But ideally, you want that like and six so to what, eight weeks. Would you really. be um? Would you, are you more focusing on technique or just fitness? Really fitness, because if you yeah. haven't got the technique within that two weeks before, then it depends. Then on you're gonna it's yeah. gonna be a massive concern, and and the main thing I say to people is that. You're going to go into your first fight. Mm. Fitness is going to be a massive variable. It's going to yeah. be a massive factor because you've got all that 
adrenaline, which is going to make you tired anyway. Yeah. And you're going to be, uh, most people are going to be nervous when they're going into the yeah. fight and they're going to feel real tired after that first round. Mm. So we need to prepare them mentally that that's yeah. what's going to happen. We need to prepare them physically so the fitness is going to be the highest level as possible. Mm. So I would say fitness is a, is a major... I mean, it could be the difference, Shading. I mean, you both, whoever you're fighting, you both probably got, you know, a similar... Uh, quality you would think, but sometimes I mean, I'm, I yeah, can understand yeah. some people just have better technique than mm. others, but in a lot of fights, yeah. you know, that fitness level and mm. endurance uh, could be the differentiating factor that uh, mm. makes someone 100%. Win. Mm. Fitness is such a big thing, and conditioning uh, mindset mm. is going to be a, a big thing as well. Yeah. I, I have had a lot of people who have gone into a fight and by the words and what they've said before. It's really doubted me that they're going to do their best yeah. in there, and so I that's thought, that psychological mm, you know, if someone says lost a fight before they've gone in there, yeah. that's the psychological yeah. part of it. Fitness is going to be an aspect, and put I push that so much in that all my guys are going to be at high level fitness. You know, mm. I don't really want them getting in there if they're not because they're not going to perform to what no. you know. They could, they they're could be, they could be technically to build up lactic far, acid, yeah. quick, smart fatigue sets in. They could be fatigue technically the far superior than someone they're fighting, but they're going to lose just because mm. of fitness. It's, yeah. it's just not. And it, you, and you, know, you know, our increasing our fitness. The objective of increasing our fitness is reducing yeah. fatigue. Mm. You know, so uh, you could say that fatigue is one of the, you know, the biggest factors for yeah. for uh, fitness. And re- the recovery between rounds and mm. you know everything yeah. to do with that so reducing fatigue and being able to yeah recover quickly mm. so so the progression is going to be different for everyone it could be a number of months it could be like mm. a year it could be yeah. whatever and then you get your first fight and then you start working on your journey of where do I go from here you know yeah. like and, um, so is everyone sort of there's no um, uh, sort of you know most people have this particular journey like I'd um, say majority of people come in they start learning the techniques, they begin the sparring, um, we start then knowing that they obviously want to fight, so then mm. we start focusing on more specific stuff to how the fight is going to play out, mm. um, really pushing the emphasis and on, then what, on fitness. Like, what, what about when they've had a few fights, you know, like maybe mm. they've won a few fights or yeah. they've, you know, mm. lost a few fights or, you know, what, what, what do they do from there? So basically... Like you just go do more fights? I think it depends on what their end goal is. I mean, some people... I've had a few people go, I want to fight and I just want to have a one fight. Yeah. You know, like I, want, I want to go in there yeah. and I want, to, I want to do a fight because, you know, it's I've something I've always wanted to do. It. It's, a bucket, it's like, on my bucket, bucket list. list yeah. So, yeah, I'm... And it, I think it's so beneficial because of the sacrifice you place uh, and discipline you have to have on yourself. Mm. I think it's beneficial yeah. for everyone to have a fight if they have the I will to I've do it. I've done a couple. Yeah, like, the inter- the inter- yeah, though, yeah. But, you know, not the um, one where there's a winner or anything. Yeah. Um, and that was just like, uh, just to, to challenge myself mm. and to see all this training that I do, how would I actually mm. perform in, in yeah. the real thing? Yeah. So like, I learned heaps about myself mm. in terms of my technique yeah. and things like that. And, uh, you know, I've, de- I've definitely much better at... I've had three, I think. Well, one was a fundraiser and two into clubs. And yeah. And definitely much better than when I think of my first one where I yeah. just got my... Yeah, and that's like, the whole point is to, is to progress and get to it. And then some people have a, a dream of obviously getting to a title, or whether yeah. it be national or yeah. in the state or world title. You know, mm. they, they might want to get to that. And I think most people would have that sort of image in their head of mm. what they want to do. Some people will just do it because it's a challenge for them. Yeah. Like say if I was climbing a mountain, it's just a challenge for me and I want to see if I can do it. Can I do mm. that? Yeah, can yeah. I beat that person? Yeah. You know, um, So everyone's journey is going to be different. But then you go through the stages, you, you get the fight, you maybe do well in a few fights, then mm. you might look to, to to push towards a title fight, You know, yeah. um, it be at local level yeah. and then and progress for there. Or you might be looking to go against people who have... Uh, higher or more experienced to challenge yourself against those yeah, right. it's all becoming the best fight you can be you know what about if you've lost a few fights like you know yeah. what do you do from there so, so losing the fights could be again another different a few different issues of why that's happened you know i mean it, it could be down to your skill level mm. it could be down to the fitness level it could be to yeah. the could be because of the experience or the the level of the person you're against you know mm. um so it can be a lot of different what things. What about um, things like you know your inability to to uh, 
to control levels of arousal, mental arousal. I would say that was a, that, that was a like that. big thing with some people, you know, yeah. like a, a, a lot of people really. Because, uh, you know, in the previous thing we've talked about in previous episodes, mm. it's, you know, that, that ability to control mood yeah. is like, yeah. um, you know, really impacts performance. Yeah, and, it, and it's like as a coach, you've got to like figure how people respond mm. to different ways of, of yeah. training, to respond with different ways of, of, of a pre-fight. Mm. You know, do you want to get someone more psyched up? Do you want to calm them down? Mm. Do you want to encourage them? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's always going to be different from person to person. That's what really fascinates me, the psychology behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, um, Getting to know you've had some, fighters. I know and... some coaches and stuff who, who just, like, lose their shit. You know, like, they're really... And it, and they've lost it even at ringside, you know, or they've lost it backstage or whatever. And I don't know. I mean, I well, can't. I, 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 I can't. Yeah, I can't get my head around that. Cause it's not going to benefit the person at all. I know. I'm very passionate, and I. I'll, if oh, you they ever, lose if, their shit about what's happening. In yeah, there. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So then, then that's going to have a knock-on effect on. Yeah, their, on their fighter, that would yeah. be quite anxiety-inducing. I can imagine. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, mm. it's like, and, and is, is it about you or is it about yeah, the fighter who's got yeah. in there? You know, I mean, they yeah. are representing your club and they're representing your training, but mm. at the end of the day, they they've done the hard work it's and they're in there. Fight. You know, when you you invest a lot into a fighter, you invest a lot in, um, and. Uh, you know, to have, yeah, to, to, to react that way yeah. is, is not, is not so good. Not if you see me at the end of the day, of, of a coaching day of a fight, you know how tired I am. Yeah. Because I put everything into that and I'm so willing the person to do the yeah. best they possibly yeah. can. Um, and that could be that they've come away with a loss, but they've done really good and they've improved mm, so much. Yeah. And you've seen that a lot with yourself with fighters. You've watched them and gone, wow. I've never seen you fight any better. You just, you know, you just got pipped at the post or mm, whatever. Mm. But it's going to help you. It's going to progress yeah, you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I've learned so like much more from my losses. You only fail yeah. if you if you do something and don't learn from it. Yeah. So you know, uh, it's it's you might have lost the fight, but mm. as long as you take something away from it, yeah, learn it, something, you add to use it. it to fuel improvement, mm. uh, then. You know, that's a win in itself. Yeah, I mean, in the day, it's win, win, winning like and losing is part of being a fighter. <laughs> and if you know, you, if you can't cope with that, you know, you got to learn how to do that because yeah, it's yeah. it's a big part of it. And mm. there's a majority of there's a majority of people are going to have wins, they're going to have losses. There's not many people that are going to go through an unbeaten record, yeah. but there's a few out there. Yeah. But um, you do learn a lot from yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, you do. But um, yeah, that, that journey is going to be different from it for everyone. Um, but that that's the basic one I, w- I would say from from my experience, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, and it, and it's a good thing to. So I guess that fighters have to sit down and think about, you know, do I want to just keep doing, you know, fights around within the state or yeah. whatever, mm. or do I want, you know, to. Well, that's a, that's a, a progression. Yeah, you start off at state level, and then obviously yeah. when you get to that point where. You think you can progress and you get into that national level. Mm-hmm. Now you can compete against people around around the country, and then yeah. and then you go internationally. And so you know, fighters have to decide if they actually want to do that, and get to that point. And, yeah, you know, obviously we, like, we we can advise a hell mm. of a lot more serious and yeah, you know, and you know how much it takes over your life when yeah, you compete at that level. Mm. And um, I think so some, I got, sometimes I think it goes that, back to that plan, you know that. And it's and, and as a coach, you got to be like realistic with with the fighter because some people I think sometimes people are they're very unconfident about their skill level yeah but they can also be um, very unrealistic about the skill level like yeah. they're better than the so, thing they are yeah. you know at, at that stage underestimate and themselves you still got some underestimate work to do. themselves yeah you've still got some work to do but they, mm. they want you know they want the yeah, the glory, the glory right yeah. in there <laughs> yeah, and exactly. they believe that they have the skill set in order to achieve it at that that's point, right because what you're trying to build up a fighter and you're trying to build up their their confidence mm, all the time so yeah. you, you're trying to progress them and then obviously they're having a few fights and they get a lot of yeah. a lot of attention from that and then it can go the other way mm. you know they, they get, you have to tell them to like keep yeah. it real yeah exactly yeah. but um it's all it's all an interesting journey it's all a, a fun journey and, and you want to enjoy it mm. it wants to be challenging but you want to enjoy it um so yeah maybe, maybe we can obviously go through that in another podcast to break down and, and different parts of, of a fight camp that mm. might be quite interesting be, to yeah, do. Yeah, fight mm. camp would be cool. That would mm. be really interesting. Yeah. It's very different from band camp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, band camp. <laughs> uh, yeah, cool. So we've covered them five 
five questions there. That was really interesting. Yeah. There, I, I always mm-hmm. found it interesting because a few things I wasn't sure about, and um, that you covered there, which was yeah, really well, cool. You know, I've learned some stuff. You've learned some stuff. Hopefully, you, don't you have guys to say out you've there, some for me. I have. <laughs> I, I seriously did about this. You know what? That's yeah. why I was asking you questions because it's I'm joking. kind yeah. of intriguing as to the process of like becoming a fighter. It's like a really yeah. unique type of the progression. I like you know I've only been in this this environment fighting environment i mean for god's sake my hit my past exercise was ballet yeah. so you know this is like mm. very uh um it's it seemed very yeah. alien to me at first yeah. like just you know what fighters go through their their training the process of fighting and yeah. you know i started going and watching fights first time you know i'd seen fights and mm. um you know it is a very unique type of of um process way to live etc and so you know i find yeah. that i find that really interesting that's why i have all the respect in the world for anyone who gets in the ring because mm. it's so much sacrifice so mm. much discipline and it's yeah. your body's telling you everything but to get in the yeah. ring so it, it i give all the all the props to those people because a lot of people want to do it props aren't you huh? you're also giving yourself props yeah 100 percent. yeah, yeah. <laughs> good one <laughs> but you know what I mean like it, it yeah, takes a absolutely, lot it takes a lot yeah. so people put all this pressure on themselves and it's mm. like man you're doing good you're getting yeah, in there you're doing it, it. And, no and it's an achievement in itself just getting in the ring yeah and you learn a lot okay, about, you learn a lot about yourself mm. and it, it does follow over into the parts of your life mm. it really does yeah. you know like anything where it's super challenging yeah if I can do that then I can do bloody anything mm. all you want to be is a Functional fighter. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. So All right. We'll call yeah, it that there, was then. good. Thank you so much for your questions. They were really useful. And if you have any other questions, um, or if you have any suggestions of topics you want us to cover, or any other questions, what were the were the questions that you wanted? Them um, oh, just oh, nutrition, wasn't it? Nutrition. Like, if you have any ones that relate to nutrition and exercise, or nutrition and fighting, or nutrition and something. Then Any no. questions, really, but we are mm. going to do one on nutrition. I think we're going to have some guest speakers on the next couple, but a um, uh, couple of uh, one of the girls yeah, we will eventually from the UFC do and a few other bits and pieces, but um, we will be doing it very shortly. So if you have any questions about that, also when we post these up, we're going to be going on to iTunes and what's, yeah. your, other, what's your other domain? So iTunes and um, Libsyn and um, oh, uh, on... Uh, no, YouTube, I think I'm, I'm able Popped to get on YouTube. YouTube. So, yeah, yeah. so you've got the YouTube channel, so you've got the first two on there. So mm. please leave comments, give some feedback, and then we'll, um, we'll try and improve it here as well, and we'll try and incorporate some of your questions. So we will speak to you soon. Yep. Bye now. See you later.